The FBI estimate that there are currently at least 250,000 cold cases in America alone. And this is one of them. In vacation, the White House... That. Officials found her nude from the waist down in the... Wasted. Township woman who was strangled to death. It was on a Tuesday that Christine Castiglione was raped and murdered, left lying half naked. In the cold Michigan air of March, she'd been visiting a friend, waiting for her boyfriend to pick her up. I guess she got sick of waiting. When he saw her in his rearview mirror, he turned around, but she was already gone. After driving up and down the road looking for her, he went and told her mother. When she didn't come home that night, her mother called the cops. Cops told the parents she was most likely a runaway. But when they got a tip off, and they found her 10 days later, over 45 miles away, in a hunting reserve, they knew they were wrong. That wrong. Found in her bra, a naked below the waist. In what appeared to be a sexually motivated crime, She'd been severely beaten, cause of death unknown. Her purse was laying beside her. Everything was still in it. Christina worked as a clerk in a business in town. Only a week before, she'd contacted an army recruitment agency looking to sign up. She still lived with her parents. She had a younger sister. By all accounts, she was a good girl. When they checked out the boyfriend, he was cleaner than a paraplegic's driver's license. When they got the teenager on the slab, well, I told the rest of the story. Whoever got to her, got to her good, gave her a good beating. Seemed they hated females. Either that, or they knew her, and they had a score to settle. The rape was brutal. And when they strangled her, chances are they were still inside her, finishing off. Does that count as necrophilia? Who could say? I'm not an expert, but there's one thing for sure, it all counts as murder. The more that the cops poked around, it seemed the less that they knew. Christina didn't seem to have an enemy in the world, yet the beating she took seemed personal. Didn't even look like she'd put up much of a fight, at least not to be given the brutality she'd been handed. And statistically, when there's a homicide, there's normally some sort of connection between the victim and the suspect. But if there was, the cops couldn't find one. After she left her friends, she stopped into a supermarket to buy some smokes. Someone reported that a strange lady'd been hanging out in the supermarket at the time. One that looked suspiciously like a man dressed like a woman. Christina was last seen outside that supermarket, walking in the direction of her home. Was she abducted, or did she go willingly? Cops started running down every freaking town. But being that it was Detroit, they lost count. And after five years of trying, the case went colder than a retard's tongue licking ice cream off of his own belt buckle. It was almost 40 years later the Detroit City cops finally got it into their budget to start going through some of their old cases and submit evidence into DNA testing. And they submitted a jar full of jizz that they scooped out of Christina. 
and the jizz detector never lies. And it came up with two hits. Relatives from an ancestry site they believed were related to the killer. And when they contacted the two relatives, they were more than eager to rat out on their loved one. And through family genealogy, we were able to link the suspect to a living uncle um, and ultimately come up with the name of Charles David Shaw. Charlie Shaw was a petty thief, a druggie, and a well-known creep. Been arrested on multiple charges, one of them for stealing a pair of ladies' shoes from a J.C. Penney's. When cops knocked on Charlie's last known address, his wife answered and told him that he'd been a long time dead. He'd accidentally killed himself while jerking off, hanging from a door frame. At the time, he wished to undergo a sex change and was seeking counseling to do so. Um, she also described him as a sexual deviant. You better mind your tongue, honey, because talk like that'll end you up in jail. That's a hate crime. Born a few years later, an old Charlie would have become big on TikTok. But I ain't gonna judge. Cause judging ain't my business. And poor Christina, all her close relatives passed without ever finding out who the killer was. Well, except her youngest sister. And she thanked the cops and said she'd never given up hope. So there isn't a day that goes by they don't think about her. And cops say they still don't know if the ugly broad in the supermarket was Charlie. But either way, they figured that Charlie Shaw had targeted Christina. But they're just unsure if they'd met or not, or there'd been a previous relationship. Legion Forever!